The following is a selected video from MasterTheContent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit MasterTheContent.com. Your career, our passion. Here at figure 17, we're presented with 19 anomalous electron configurations. And as we see, most of which begin at the fifth energy shell and beyond. And the reason this occurs from the fifth energy shell and beyond is due to the fact that the, the energy difference between subshells at this point is going to be so small that an electron can move from uh, one subshell to another in turn lowers the total energy of the atom and uh, why does that happen it's because of the fact that there's going to be a decrease in those electron electron repulsion forces furthermore anomalous electron configurations have unusual stability with half filled orbitals and fully filled orbitals and let's explore that statement now using chromium and copper on the next slide which are the two elements that you're most likely going to come across on test A. Beginning here with chromium. For chromium, using the AFBAO principle, those guidelines, we would anticipate that the electron configuration would be the noble gas configuration of argon or S2, 3D4. Yet, the actual electron configuration for chromium is going to be the noble gas configuration of argon, 4S1, 3D5. Reason being those electron-electron repulsion forces can be decreased by moving an electron from a 4s, uh, excuse me, from a 4s subshell to a 3d, uh, from a energetically similar 3d subshell as we see here. And that in turn is going to uh, decrease the total energy of the, uh, of the atom. Now, let's, let's consider what happened here to to uh, bring that atom to a total, to decrease the total energy of the atom, what transpired here? Well, we traded a filled S subshell where electron electron repulsion was high for two half filled subshells, right? That being a 4S and a 3D subshell. Okay, let's continue our discussion now and, and uh, take a look as to why there is that unusual stability for fully filled orbitals and we use. Uh, We'll use copper here as our example. To, for copper, as we see here, the electron configuration expected using the guidelines that we had outlined in the previous section, it would be the noble gas configuration of argon 4s2 3d9. Yet its actual electron configuration is going to be the noble gas configuration of argon 4s1 3d10. And in this instance, as you see here, an electron was transferred from a 4s orbital to a 3d orbital. And uh, uh, excuse me, copper gained stability by trading a 4s uh, for a traded by trading a filled 4s subshell for a different type of filled subshell, that being a 3d subshell and a half filled 4s subshell. Great. Let's continue now to the next slide. Now here we've provided you with a list of anomalies in ground state electron configurations, beginning first with the atomic number, the elemental symbol, the name of the element, as well as its ground state electron configuration. Should you need it, it's here for you. And let's move on to our next slide here. Here we're being asked, example electron configuration. Why do the electron configurations of some elements differ from those predicted by the AFBAO principle? A, lower en excuse me, lowest energy level is filled completely. B, no elements differ. C, half-filled sublevels are less stable than filled energy levels predicted by the AFBAO principle. Or D, half-filled sublevels are most are excuse me more stable than those predicted by the AFBAO principle. This answer is pretty straightforward. It's going to be D. And there we are. Now let's move on to our next slide. 